today we just want him to be glorified. Can you find someone and say, I don't know about you, but I came to give him the glory. And if you didn't get the response that he deserved, find someone else and say, only he will get the glory. Only he will get the glory, but I came to give him glory. Oh, this song, I think we know it. If you don't know it, join in this hymn.
Lord. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. This is your time to worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Lift your voice and worship.
take it personal, just the voices. Thank you.
want to say thank you. Now won't you lift it up in this place. Let his thankfulness be on your heart today. If he's done anything for you. If he's done anything for you. Won't you say thank you. Won't you say thank you. You are worthy to be praised. We say thank you Lord. We say thank you. Thank you Lord. I say thank you Lord. Won't you lift your voice. Thank you Lord. I want to say thank you
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless you. Your knees are weak or your back is ailing. Now let's praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we're going to stop singing and I just want you to use your words to give your God some praise. Whether it's a hallelujah, whether it's a thank you, whether Lord I love you, Lord I adore you, but in your own personal way, in your own special way. Hallelujah. That's it. Come on. I hear some praises. You're, this is a dress rehearsal for what we're going to be doing when we get before the throne of God. We're going to be saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, which was, which is, and is to come. Hallelujah. Be glorified. Father, we thank you. Father, we adore you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you worship. We magnify you this afternoon. We give you the fruit of our lips, which is the sacrifice of our praise. We adore you tonight, this afternoon. We adore you this afternoon. We adore you this afternoon. We adore you this afternoon. We adore you. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what he did for you, but you know what he did for you. You know what he brought you out of. You know what he kept you in. You know what he kept you from. Come on and give a praise, people of God. Oh, we bless you. Oh, we bless you. We bless you this afternoon. We worship you. 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 We understand you are worthy. 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 No God like you in all of creation. You are worthy.
Come on and show, share the love of the Lord Jesus this afternoon. Hallelujah. And as you greet them, tell them, He is God alone. He is God alone. He is God alone. He is God alone.
Tony Page, and I'm so delighted that you all have come to hang out with us just for a little while this Sunday afternoon. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. How many of you are glad to be here? Amen. 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 Again, face-to-face -face worship center, we are a ministry called to uh, minister the word of God, to meet people where they are. Um, our mission is to create relationships intentionally to preach and teach the word of God that convicts a man, woman, boy, or girl's heart. Once you have been convicted, we believe that the Holy God, Holy God can change you or convert you. Somebody say change. change. Hallelujah. And once you have been converted, hallelujah, we believe that you then have a mandate to go and get everybody in your circle and tell them about the goodness of Jesus. How many of you shared Jesus last week? Raise your hand. Don't you lie in church. How many of you shared Jesus last week? Amen, amen, amen. How many of you lived a life that was pleasing that shared Jesus? Amen, amen, amen. I got more hands that live the life than those who open their mouth and share. But let's not keep the goodness of Jesus to ourselves. Amen? Amen, amen. And to all of those watching via our social media platforms, welcome to Face to Face Worship Center, the place of intimate worship. How many of you ready to participate in worship this afternoon? It is called the offering. Come on, put those hands together. It's offering time here at Face to Face Worship Center. As you prepare your offering, please join us in making this declaration over your finances. The declaration will also be scrolling across your screen. Now repeat after me. I walk in financial abundance. God supplies all of my needs, not half of them, but all of them. Satan, take your hands off my finances. Finances, I command you to be loosed from the world system. Because I give times and offerings, I am blessed and not cursed. Therefore, God will see to it that I always have more than enough for myself and to bless others. There are several ways to give here at Face to Face Worship Center. Give Levi, look for Face to Face Worship Center. Cash App, it's a dollar sign, F2FWC, our website at F2FWC.org, and click the donate link, or you can text F2FWCGIVE to 1 364 4483 and give your offering there. Father, we thank you for the generous giving of these your people. We pray according to Luke 6 and 38. As your people give, give back unto them. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give back unto them. May this be their season for a financial windfall, in Jesus' name. Turn to the right. Thank you, Elder Tanya. To the right. That's all right. Thank you, Elder Tanya. Because I give tithes and offerings, I 
I am blessed. I like the way that sounds. I am blessed. I am blessed and not cursed. Therefore, God will see to it. God will see to it that I always have more than enough for myself and to bless others. In Jesus' name. Now, if you believe that, come on and give God a hand praise. Thank you, finance team. That's it. Sunday, August the 20th, is it the 5th? The 25th, I want you all to do something fun, enjoy yourself. You really don't need to lay in the sun, most of you. Um, so uh, if you choose to, make, and if you choose not, make sure you just put your sunscreen on and uh, cover up. Amen, hallelujah. But if you're at the beach, go to the beach, to make a long weekend. Um, but next Sunday, there is no service. Um, but Saturday, somebody say Saturday. Saturday. I am looking for every one of you to be here at our annual Chill and Grill. It is our family. Uh, it is a day for face-to-face -face worship center to just celebrate one another and have fun. We're going to eat some watermelon. We're going to eat some fried fish. We're going to eat some fried chicken baked beans and all of those kind of things. Whatever you all choose to bring. Um, as Pastor Marcus said last week, now if you can't cook, I want you to go to the store and purchase. Amen? And if you think you can make devil eggs, but nobody ever told you you could, if you don't have a cosigner, nine times out of ten, your devil eggs aren't good. Uh oh, did I say that? Ancient eggs, devil eggs, whatever you call them. I look, I don't, I don't cook, so, but I just ask you, don't bring them. Okay, and, but but it, you know, and if you have a specialty, you know, many many people say, oh, I got a specialty. This is my specialty. But if nobody ever co-signed and told you your specialty was special, it's probably not special. But you can always pick up some sodas, some orange juice, some watermelon, some ice. You can donate. Financial. You donate, or if you you can even yeah. give, donate some money towards yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Chilling Grill. But next Saturday, right here at Face to Face Worship Center, from eleven, from twelve to five. From twelve to five. Thank you, Minister Ramona. From twelve to five, right out there, we are going to have a good time. Wear your shorts. Wear your tennis shoes. We're going to have games for the young people. Um, we're going to sing some songs. We're going to jump some rope. Um, we bring, your, bring your chairs, your lawn chairs. Bring your tents if you have personal tents. But come ready to have fun. Amen? Now, I'm looking for every one of you. Let me look in. I'm going to look in every one of y'all face real quick. Eyeball to eyeball. And guess what I'm not taking? Excuses. Any excuses. Amen. And you don't need reservations. Because you have an open invitation. Amen. 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 So get ready to have fun. It is our annual um, chilling grill. And it's really our exit out of the summer. Amen. As we get ready to move into the fall. And then last but not least. Um, our dear brother Bill. Is 
home celebrate homegoing celebration is this Thursday at what time, Pastor Marcus? At 2 p.m. Um, please, I'm asking that we have a good delegation of partners from face to face. If you if you're off, if you're available, get with Pastor Marcus. He will give you the information um, to go and celebrate our brother Bill. He passed on last Saturday or Sunday. Friday. Last Friday, Friday before last. Friday before last. Amen. And let's continue to keep um, our brothers and pastors and elders that we don't see ministers, friends, family of the ministry. When we don't see people in the sanctuary, let's keep them in our prayers. Amen. Amen. Um, we know that several people are dealing with some financial issues, some physical issues, some of our partners are in the hospital, but how many of you know God is the answer? Yes, amen. 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 I'm going to bring, um, I'm going to um, announce Minister Shay Means, one of our ministers, will be bringing the word this afternoon. But before she comes, I feel it appropriate if our sister Ke uh, Kian will come. Um, doesn't she look sun kissed? <laughs> I tell you, they, they, they went on vacation and didn't even invite me. But evidently they didn't want me to come, right? No, no. but I, I think they had a good time, the kids, and got to see pictures and things of that nature on their social platform. So let's um, welcome Sister Kian as she comes back and ministers to Samana Solo. And then the next voice you will hear will, will be that of our minister, Shay Means. And I want you to say, Minister Shay. Minister let the Lord use you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know if you all can't tell, but today I'm just thankful. I'm thankful to God for all the ways he's made. Every door he's opened. Every time he's healed my body. Every time he restored my mind. Every time he kept me when I didn't Want to be kept every time he wrapped me in his arms, his loving arms, like nobody but him can. So this song just cries out. It says, Lord, you've done so much for me. You've given me everything I And with chaos around, I still choose to say, Lord, I'm thankful for every way you made. Can I do that again? It says, Lord, you've done so much for me. Anyone he's given everything. With chaos around, with chaos around, I still choose to say, I am thankful for every way you made. Hallelujah. I'm thankful to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm thankful to you, Lord. 
right now saying thank you. When we go into worship, we should not be um, um, pulled or prodded or pushed. It should be a natural reaction, a natural response to who the God is that we serve. I am grateful on today. I am thankful on today. We serve a good, good father. And like Pastor Tony said, he doesn't need us for anything.
frightening, horrible things disappear, right? Uh -huh. At least that's what we thought. Uh -huh. So sometimes as a kid, we wanted to escape into the playground of our imagination and be a superhero, a gourmet chef, or maybe a famous anything. Or we could create a physical place of solace, like a tree house or a fort. Anybody build forts ever before? Anybody Anybody have a tree house? Who was blessed to have them, you know, good, good parents could let you put a, see, good, good parents, let you put a tree house in, uh, in the backyard. Well, Amen. Um, we will forget about where we were physically located because our powerful and limitless minds would take us away to wherever we wanted to go. So we're going to take a trip, you know, to tap into that imagination that you packed up in a box once you hit, you know, 18, 19 years old. Being covered in darkness and concealed somehow gave us a feeling of safety and security. We could go inside our fort, our treehouse, or into our make-believe reality to shut whatever was going on around us out. How many of you all know we were onto something when we did that? As kids, we were onto something when we did that. We created a shelter, this place of safety and comfort be it under the covers, in a tree house, or a fort to escape, feel safe, feel some sense of peace and calm, or just to feel like we were in control of something in our little lives in this big, enormous world. But what happens as adults now when we get scared? When we need to feel safe and secure. When everything, including us sometimes, is out of control and nothing makes sense. When life is doing what life does, y'all, it's life in. And we just wish we could close our eyes and make it all disappear like a kid again. Where can we go? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Because we have here a fort, right? And for those who pay attention and been in church for a good little while, I gave you all the scripture for the sermon, but I never gave you a title, did I? Oh, I didn't. Well, glad y'all paid attention because our fort is called The Secret Place. And the topic of our message for this afternoon is The Secret Place Revealed. Say it with me. The Secret Place Revealed. If we read Psalm 91 in its entirety, we notice that it is a text with many promises. But if we read too quickly, we'll miss the part that we must play in order to be recipients of those promises. It's very simple, but oftentimes it may be overlooked. My first point, we must choose to dwell. What's my first point? Choose to dwell. All right, y'all listening. I love it. I love it in this Talk Back Church. So as a kid, we climbed up into our treehouse where we built our fort by choice, free will, and our own volition. No one forced us or coerced us to do so. We get bored, we ain't had nothing to do, or we get scared and want to check out, so we make a fort. So we climb up in that tree house and we be in our own little la la land world for as long as we so chose. Now, once we got into our fort or tree house, yes, we determined, unless our parents objected, how long we stayed there. So we could be there for a few minutes or a few hours, or sometimes if they even let us, days at a time. <laughs> Merriam-Webster defines dwell as a verb that means to remain for a time or to live as a resident. As we matured into adulthood, our forts and tree houses, they disappeared. I don't think I can come to anybody's house that's grown with no kids and see a tree house in the backyard that they get up in or see a fort near a living room. I mean, if that's your thing, I'm not coming for your thing. But typically, we put those things away and we leave it in childhood. But we still maintain a refuge or shelter from the problems of life. We just now call it something different. So anybody got a man cave at home? Any fellas with a man cave? Be honest, you can tell the truth. You got a man cave? You got a man cave, okay. Or she shed ladies. I don't have one yet, but it's coming in Jesus' name. My she shed. Perhaps so we include our friends by going over to their house to escape home or life and its cares. We still have free will to choose where we dwell and for how long. All right. Or sometimes... We go inside ourselves, lost in our own mind and thoughts, or even still as an adult, our imagination. Just because we grew up, our imagination did not just magically disappear. We just limit its capabilities with our adult logic and sensible reason. 
So I have a question to ask you. Where are you dwelling currently when life gets hard? Problems plague you or the world begins to become an unrecognizable place. Because I don't know about y'all, but childhood ain't childhood now the way it was then. My kids don't grow up in the world that I grew up in. It's very, very, very different. So much so that I can't even really relate to it. Life as we know it is beginning to and will continue to change. Mm -hmm. So where do we go when everything that's so comfortable and familiar and, and just that we could depend on to be our constant is no more? Okay. In the deep recesses of your mind, are you dwelling in your problem? How about in your pain? Mm -hmm. Are you in the past? In worry? In stress? When I get to your, um, your street, just say ouch. Quietly, in anxiety. Are you just ignoring it all and your mind is completely checked out? It's like cricket. Because you don't want to hear nothing. Or nobody. Are you dwelling on everything and everyone so it's constant chaos radiating in your mind? Are you dwelling on doing what needs to be done just to cope and make it through? Are you a busybody? Just being busy. Just to do. To say you're doing. So you don't got to think. You don't got to you don't got to do nothing because you're busy. Jesus. Are you dwelling in rebellion? Jesus. Hmm. Are you dwelling in dread? In doubt. I hear you, Holy Spirit. So if we're dwelling in rebellion, we're just doing life as we choose. Forget what God got to say. I'm going to do me. Wow. I don't got to check in with you, God. Wow. You don't own me. You don't tell me what to do. I'm my own person. This is what we say to ourselves. Or the enemy whispers those lies. Are we in dread? Are we in doubt? God, I know what you said, but what I see is different. Are we in defeat? Every time I try, something just happens and pushes me back. What's the purpose of trying? Defeat. Are we in self-loathing? Why me? Why does this always have to happen to me? I'm just audibly stating the voices that are in some of our heads. Why does this always happen to me? Why not somebody else? What did I ever do? <laughs> What's wrong with me? Me, me, me. Why me? Are we dwelling in control? I got this. I don't need nobody's help. I can figure it out on my own. What I need God for? I can figure this out. I got this. Are we in chaos? Everything is just chaotic from the time we wake up to the time we go to bed, we are in hey. perpetual chaos yeah. in our mm. hands. Mm. Are we in depression? Everything is just blue and sad and gloomy. Mm. Are we in fear? You're, you're scared of everything. If you could walk around literally with a blanket over your head, you would. Because you're scared of everything and everybody. Are we in failure? Everything we've tried to do has failed, so what's the point of me trying? I'm a failure. Everything I do, I fail at. Again, I'm just telling you what I hear in the spirit, what's in some of our heads right now, where we dwell in this place. I'm in lack. I never have enough. I always live paycheck to paycheck. I'll never have enough to do what I need to do. I'll always be in poverty. I'll always be in lack. My, I'll never have enough to make more in lack. I want you to take self-inventory and ask yourself, where am I dwelling? Even if I didn't come on your street and knock on your door just now, where are you dwelling? Are you dwelling on the facts of the diagnosis, the feelings concerning your current circumstance, or are you dwelling in faith? Where are you dwelling in the recesses of your mind and in the confines of your heart? The choice my brothers and sisters, is solely yours and mine to yeah, make. Yeah. Yeah. But according to Psalm 91 and 1, we have another option to dwell in. Amen. And that place is called the secret place yeah. of the Most High. Yeah. So of all of those yeah. thoughts and feelings and emotions and facts that we just talked about, there is an escape. There is a fortress. There is a safe space that we can go to to hide from everything else that's going on in the world. And we're going to talk about that right now. So point two, 
the secret place of the Most High. What's going to? Amen. I'm glad y'all have y'all listening ears. Yes. In Hebrew, the word setar is a verb meaning to hide. The noun form of setar is seder, which means a secret hiding place. So remember, as a kid, when we pull the covers over our heads or we ran into our fort to hide in secret, we were on to something because we can do that very same thing still as an adult. And it won't look weird or strange because we 37 years old with a big old tree house in our backyard and we'll have no kids. So you come over our house at 54 and we got a fort in the living room. It's not a secret because it's exclusive to an elite special type of person like our armed forces or our sororities and our fraternities. Mm -mm. No, it's secret because it's intimate. It's personal and private, unique to each individual, just like your fingerprint or your social security number. We all have one, but no two are the same. See, when we go in to meet God in the secret place, because we're all different, he meets us just as different as we are. So don't think you got to dress yourself up, calm your thoughts, turn up, uh uh-uh. Go in just the way you are because he's going to meet you right there yeah. Yeah. in a secret place. Yeah. It is a place, a noun, which is defined as a portion of space available or designated for or being used by someone. So it is a place. The secret place is a place for us to go to. Well, who does it belong to? I'm so glad you asked. It belongs to the Most High. In Genesis chapter 14, verse 18, it's points to God being described as the most high. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was priest of the most high God. Now, thank you, Pastor Tony, for months ago when you gave us a Bible study lesson on who God was, and I'm going to borrow from my Bible study notes, but you said God was El El Yom. He was God most high. And God used this title when he wanted to impress you with his sovereignty over the earth. So God most high has a secret place where he longs for all of us to dwell. Because he's God most high, meaning he's high above it all. So there is no problem. There is no proclivity. There is no scenario. There is no issue that he is not high above. The earth is his footstool. So he's high above it all. He sits high and looks low. He is high above it all. So regardless of what the enemy is constantly whispering to your ear, regardless of what you hear on the news reports, regardless of what you hear your enemy say, your family members say, your co-workers who don't really like you for real say, God most high wants to meet you in the secret place. He created a special place just for you, my brother and sister. It's just for you. God most high wants to come down and meet you right where you are. Right where you are. Jesus went to the secret place. And Mark 1 and 35, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. Anybody pray in here outside of being in Sunday service? I pray to God you do. Oftentimes we do it out of Religious rhetoric and tradition, right? We know we're supposed to pray, you know, when we first wake up in the morning, at least acknowledge God that he woke you up, not the alarm clock. We pray over our food. Uh, We pray at the end of the day. Um, But oftentimes we don't take that time. And I I could just speak for myself because it's safe to talk about me. A lot of my life, I prayed as needed, right? I'm supposed to pray when I wake up. I'm supposed to pray when I go to bed and over my food. But God, if I need you, I'm going to talk to you. But if not, I'm good. I never really set aside time just to spend with God. And when Jesus went, he went, he got up and went. So he was very intentional about what he was doing. He went to an isolated place. So there was nobody else around. It was just him and the Father who was waiting for him, just like he's waiting for you and I. But we have to get into the posture and the position where we understand and know I got to separate and isolate myself from everything around me for a minute and just go sit with the Father. Yeah, That's how it starts. Make the time. Because he made the time to wake you up. That's right. He made the time to protect you and start you on your way. Give him his time That's right. in the secret place. Just to spend with him. Just a little bit of time. And I promise you.
push you, what may start it out as five or 15 minutes, it's gonna grow over time, over time, over time, because I promise you it's oh so good when you're with him in a secret place, so much so you don't want to leave. Can I get a witness for those of us who have experienced God, thank you God, in the secret place, you experience them so much and in such an intimate, personal, connected way, you don't want to leave. That's like going over to that friend that you've been friends forever and you just laugh and talk for hours and hours and hours on end. Before you know it, it's the next day just about you to have such a good time. It's just like that with God, but better, I promise you, in a secret place. Isaiah gives us some good advice. In Isaiah 55 and 6, he says, Seek the Lord while you can find him. Call on him while he is near. A lot of times we don't call on God. He's a last resort to us. A lot of times it's like, all right, I can do this, I can do this. We didn't figure it out. We didn't did the math. The math is mathing. And, and we just can work it out. I got this. No, but really do it. Call on him now while he is near. Because let me tell you something about God. Um, God is always near. God is always close. We create distance in space. How? By our sin. By our rebellion. By our unrepentant heart. By lack of forgiveness. That creates space between us and God. And only we can close that space by getting rid of those things. Getting rid of that sin. Getting rid of being unrepentant. Getting rid of the unforgiveness and the bitterness in our heart. God is close to all of us now. Even in this place. His presence is here. So when we call on him, now he's near, he can answer. So seek the Lord while you can find him. Because of what's to come and what's to happen in the earth, oh, we're going to need him like never before. I've been sent on divine assignment to tell face-to-face worship center and those in attendance. God said, prepare my people. I said, how, God? He said, put them in my face, the secret place. You get in the face of God in the secret place. When you turn off all the distractions, you you give your husband and your boo break for a minute, you just go sit with God. Yeah. Well, Minister Shay, I don't know what that's like. I don't know what that means. I help you. The secret place is the place where you meet with the most high God through prayer. And that's talking with God. We talk and he listens and responds. A lot of us go to God and we got a laundry list of God, can you do this? God, will you do that? God, I want this. I want that. Like we're sitting on his lap and he said it, Claus. We're giving him our last, latest request. Mm-mm. We have to grow past it being a monologue and it becoming a dialogue. We're seeking, and a lot of us do this, and I'm telling myself, I used to do it too. We seek the prophet of God, that man, that woman, that pastor, to give us a word when we should be seeking the face of God for ourselves. That's right. There is nothing that Pastor Tony can tell you that God himself won't tell you. Amen. And it'll come quicker through God himself than it will yeah, Pastor will. Tony. Because Pastor Tony ain't always going to be available. Amen. Pastor Tony might not always receive a word for you about you. And I promise you he ain't going to make up anything. Amen. So we have to stop going out. Mm, thank you Holy Spirit. We have to stop going outside of ourselves uh-huh. to seek what already should be in us. Yeah. Which is the Holy Spirit. The word, yes. We got to stop going outside of ourselves. Looking to this person and to that person and to those fortune tellers and soothsayers and horoscopes and all those things that tell us stuff about us. All we got to do is go to the Father. He created us anyway. Why would he not know what's best for us? We do God a mighty disservice when we do that. Because truly it's not of him anyway. But we do him a great disservice when we go to this person and that person and that person and that person. Amen. And don't even come to him. Well, we come to him as a last resort. Maybe, my dear brother and my sister, maybe that's why it's not working. But every time you call somebody to vent to your frustration or you want to gossip and go off, ain't nobody answering. Mm-hmm. Or maybe because that's what you do all the time. Maybe nobody's connecting with you and everybody's distance from you. Not because you did something bad, but no, God is like, I'm right here. He's trying to show you I'm here. I care. I understand. Just talk to me. Invite me in. I'm right here. But we too busy. We got to go call and text and get on Instagram and social media and tell everybody all of what's going on. We never consider God. When he should have been the first one for us to talk to. Because maybe then we wouldn't have to go and spread all our business on social media and now we're looking at a mess that we created. Fasting. 
Denying the flesh to get closer to God. We fast and we pray. Praise. Thank you, my Mary. We praise God for what he's done. Amen. So praise is just like you would praise your child for making all A's in school. Or you would praise them for doing the chores. We praise God for the things that he's done. And he's done enough. So even if we all passed the mic and went through, it, it wouldn't be enough mic or enough time for us to praise God for all that he's done. And we worship him for who he is. But how do we know who he is if we're not spending time with him? See, I don't want to know the God of my grandparents or my parents or my pastor or my elders or leaders. I want to know God for myself. I don't want a rehearsed version of what you know about God. No, I want to know him for myself. And you do that in the secret place with praise and worship. And he ended an awesome, um, not even demonstration, but she invited us in to her own private praise and worship experience. It should not be relegated just to Sunday service. Yeah. Nobody should have to get up on this mic and, and just and prompt you and poke you to say, come on, come on, come on. When you come into face-to-face -face worship center or whatever church or ministry you go to, it should be an outpouring of what you've done all throughout the week. Yeah. It shouldn't be you get here and you got to sit and, and somebody has to force you or they ain't sing my song or they ain't play it in the tune I want them to play it in or she ain't sing her solo like she sang it like she sang it. No, it should be a demonstration of what we do all throughout the week. Because yeah. God is worthy to be praised when I'm in service and when I'm out of service. When life is good and when life is horrible. When stuff is, is, is going the way it's supposed to go and then when it's not. God does not change. He remains the same. So our praise and our worship of him should not be predicated based upon our life circumstances. Why? Because he remains the same. So why should we not be praising and worshiping him? Amen. My God. Amen. The secret of the secret place is that it is the presence of God, which you gain access to by faith. Well, how do you know that? I'm so glad you asked. Hebrews 11, 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to be well-pleasing to him. For he who comes to God must believe that he exists. And that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. The reward of us seeking him is that he shows up. Nobody, I don't think nobody, unless you, it's just what you do, religious rhetoric or tradition, comes to church to worship and praise God and expects nothing in return from God. Not that your hand is out, but when you expect to worship and praise God, you expect him to show up, right? We're not going to plan a birthday party or a celebration for somebody that we love and appreciate and then know they're not going to come. Why would we do that? That don't make any sense. It's the same way with God. When we worship and praise him, he shows up. And I don't know how you all felt in this atmosphere, but when we first got in here, yeah, it was a little dry. I will admit it was. It was. It was a little dry. But we have to... Kind of, if you paid attention to what Pastor Tony did, he stirred up the atmosphere. He shifted some stuff with our praise by making us go in personally and connect with our hearts to connect back to God. That's what praise and worship does. That's what the secret place does. That's what being in the presence of God does. It changes things. It'll change you too if you let it. But I'm going to get to that. So the reward of, reward of us seeking him is that he shows up. Prove it, please. Well, I sure will. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. When we sit with the Father, when we're in our secret place and we sit long enough to listen, oh, he talks. And when I say God talks, God talks a lot. He has a lot to say. But we have to sit and posture our hearts to listen. A lot of times we just get in and get out. All right, God, do what I have to do, especially when it comes to church. I'm going to get in, I'm going to hear this word, pay my tithes, I'm going home. God has so much he wants to say to us. And it's not relegated just to a Sunday service. Because we should all know what happened with COVID. We didn't have our normal Sunday service. What did we do? So if something shifts or happens in the earth where we can't get here, what are we going to do? We're not going to praise and worship God no more? Because there is no building? Your relationship with God is just that. It's a relationship. God is not a religious God. God is a God of relationship. He proved that in Eden. 
relationship. That, that's what he wants yes. from you. Everything that we do for God should be out of our relationship with him, out of our heart posture towards him. Not just because, oh, this is my title or this is my obligation or this is what I'm supposed to do or this is what's expected of me. No, we do it out of our love for him. So again, it makes us pause and think, what is my praise and my worship and me being in the presence of the Lord saying of what I feel about him? What is it saying? What is it showing? Ourselves. Point number three. And I'm not going to have you repeat this one because it's a little long. But I know you'll catch it. We'll remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty whose power no enemy can withstand. That's the last part of the Amplified Version. We'll remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. So where are we right now, if we're paying attention? Where are we? What are we revealing? The secret place, okay? So in the secret place, God is going to show us some things. He's going to tell us some things. He's going to begin to do some things in us. And I have to obey the Holy Spirit and go back. In Jeremiah 33 and 3, it says, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. There's a lot of giftedness in this house. There's a lot of um, spiritual gifts and abilities that have gone untapped because it's, it's not the norm from what you're used to. It's not traditional. It's not religious. It kind of even makes you uncomfortable. But God wants to reveal what he's placed in you and he'll do that in the secret place. A lot of times we look to our pastor or our leaders to affirm and confirm what God has placed in us. We take these spiritual gifts assessments and we, we take these inventories of ourselves to try to figure out who we are instead of going to the Father who created us. Yeah. It's so much he wants to tell you and show you about you, but you just need to sit with him and let him do it. Amen. Stop looking to these online gurus and experts in the field. They're great, they're good, but sit with the Father so he can tell you about you because once he tells you, it's nothing, no... Nobody in earth, under the earth, around the earth, no spiritual, it's nothing, nobody. Once God tells you, can't nobody take it from you. Amen. Amen. So I, I encourage you, men and women of God, because we all are, Tyler or not, we're still all men and women of God, even my little ones. Tap into what God wants to tell you about you, because he has a lot to say, a whole lot to say. He's a good, good father, and just like with any other child. You don't stop talking to your kid because they move out your house, because they're grown, because they're adults. No, you maintain that relationship. If not, that relationship changes and becomes all the more greater, because now y'all can relate more. You have much more in common. Am I right? Amen. All right. So God ain't changed. We may have. We've grown and matured and developed, but we lose this sense of innocence, this sense of trust and faith in him, that God is going to meet us there in that secret place, because I promise you, he will. But for some reason, we've, we've relegated that to just Sunday service. And it's not. It's an ongoing, should be an ongoing thing where we're always sitting with the Father. We see that in Jesus' life. He, he oftentimes went away from all of what he was called to do. And he was perfect. So if Jesus did it, being perfect, why do we think we should not do it all the more in our sinful and human frailty? Oh, trust me, we need God more than, way more than Jesus did. So why do we function and flow as if we don't? And these questions are not just for y'all, because I'm not here to point blame with a finger, but I'm saying we inclusively, because we all need to take inventory. Point three, we'll remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. The last part of Psalms 91 and 1 should excite somebody. I don't know, it certainly excited me. God assures us that if we dwell in his shelter or in the secret place with him, that we will first remain secure. Who's ever felt insecure? Not, not physically, I mean. Insecure, like, I don't know what's going to happen to me. I don't know what's going on. Thank you for your honesty and transparency. Because when we understand and know who we are and that God covers us, we will always remain secure. So I can care less about what's going on in your neighborhood, what's happening at your job, what the economy is doing, what the news is reporting. You can always remain secure in him. 
always remain secure in him. And regardless of what your bank account says, regardless of what that um, doctor's report says, we can always remain secure in him. I don't know about anybody else, but everything in the world right now seems to be unsteady and shaking. The economy, our government, societal and cultural norms, everything is shaking. And I, I pray you hear me by the Holy Spirit. We ain't seen nothing yet. The shaking that's coming is unprecedented. The shaking that's coming is going to baffle us all. The shaking that's coming is going to set precedences, and I don't mean in a positive light. The shaking that's coming, that's why he sent me here to help prepare us for the shaking that's coming. You're going to need to know how to get into the secret place, but not just how to get there. Stay well, yes. Like we said, it's a, a set location or place before a specified period of time, but take up residence there. Abide. Abide. Don't just come and go. No. Make it your residence. Make that your permanent address on your license. When you go to fill out forms, I live at the secret place. The corner of Divine Avenue and Mine Road. My Mine Road. Divine Avenue. I reside at the secret place. You're going to need the secret place and what's to come, y'all. I promise you that you are. You're going to need to know how to seek the face of the Father and stay there. Because everything around you, I promise you, everything around you is going to shake. Everything is around us is going to shake. And we're going to need to know how to hang on to that firm foundation. And as long, the only thing permanent and dependable is God. And as long as we dwell with him, the psalmist assures us that we will remain secure. And we dwell by making a decision. Because like we said before, how, how long we dwell, that's up to us. We choose. I promise you, God ain't going to say, get out of my presence. Trust me, you will leave him before he ever leaves you. Because he promises, I'm never going to leave you, nor forsake you. So regardless of what you see around you, God going to be right there. Because many of us have questions about things that have happened to us in our life that were tragic and tumultuous. And we just didn't understand it. Couldn't make sense of it. God, why? Why you let this happen to me? Where were you? I was right there. If they did it to you, they did it to me. He was right there. And I take comfort in that. Because we never go through anything alone. I don't care how bad it is. God is right there with you. And if you question his ability to change it, if you question his ability to defend you and to stand up, that's something that you and him need to sit with and work out your theology about who he is. But he's a good, good father. And for his children, he works all of it together for our good anyway. So why are you stressing? Yeah, it happened to you. You experienced some trauma, some tragedy, some bad things happened to you. Yes, but he's going to work it all together for your good and his glory. But you find that out when you dwell with him. Where? Not only will we dwell with him, be secure in him, but we will also get to rest in his shadow. Do you understand how close you have to be to be able to rest in God's shadow? Do you realize how close that is? If we go outside right now, and even if we look slightly, we can see some shadows on the ground. The objects have to be kind of pretty close. The ground and the object that's cast in the shadow has to be extremely close, right? In order for us to rest in his shadow, we have to be what to God? Close. Closer than our very breath is how God, how close God is to us even. We just have to acknowledge it. What I'm preaching and telling you ain't nothing new. It's nothing new. God has been this way all the time. It's just us. That's, that, that needs to be reminded, or even not just reminded, Sister Terry, we have to be told. Because a lot of stuff I didn't even know. Nobody told me. I didn't grow up here in church and hearing about God and hearing about the relationship God wants to have with me like this. Ain't nobody tell me this. Because if they did, I tell you, life would have been a lot different for me. But my steps are ordered. So everything that happened, I was right on the side of the But now that I know it, I have the obligation to share it. I have the obligation to make sure as a parent I teach my kids how to put them in the face of God. No, don't come looking for me when stuff starts shaking. You better go to God because you might not be able to find me. Not that I'm going to disappear and fly away. Sometimes I wish I could. God going to be right there with you because he can be everything that I'm not. That's who he is. 
Because he's your heavenly father. He created you. I did it. You might have came through me, but he created you. And where did he create you? In the secret place. Read the Bible. It's in there. He did. He created us even in secret. Say that. But he knew, because ain't no secrets from God, because God knows everything. That's right. Ain't nothing you can hide from God. A lot of times we hide in secrecy. The enemy wants to convince us, shh, keep it a secret. Don't tell nobody. God knows anyway. He's just waiting for you to tell him. Invite him in so he can fix it. Invite him in so he can do something about it. Get your little stuff in that fort in a secret place with God and tell him all about it. We always, we, I won't say always, oftentimes we come to God thinking we have to do something first. And God is like, nope, come into me. That's the only step you need to make. Let me handle the rest. Yes, yes. It's, it's somebody here that's been toiling, trying to figure out what to do, how to fix it, how to be great, how to be good. Stop. Stop. All you got to do is go to God. He's going to fix it all. And in the process, he's going to allow you and teach you how to trust him, how to lean on him, how to depend on him, how to grow your faith in him. Because it's all a process and a journey. It's never a one and done. Amen. When you come down to this altar and you get saved, that's just the beginning. Yeah. It's just the beginning. God has a process and he has a standard. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to leave you the way that he found you. I promise you he's yeah. not. Yeah. But you got to allow him to do the work. Because it's his work to do, not yours. Yeah. You just participate in the process by being obedient. And that's a word many of us don't like. But just obey. Do what he tells you to do because he know better than you anyway. Yeah. You don't know it all. It's impossible for you to do so. Amen. Not only will we dwell with him, be secure in him, but we will also get to rest in his shadow. Like we said, we get up close and personal. We serve a God who longs to get intimate, personal and close with the ones who created. So close that we can find rest in his shadow. Just like on a hot day when he knows the shade or anything around you. And you find the smallest slither of shade from that hot sun. You're going to want to rest in that, right? Yeah. You're going to find that little piece of shade to shield you from all that hot beam of sun. You're going to want to stay right there, right? Yeah. That's what it is in God. Stay right there because life is about to get real hot and heavy, y'all. It's going to get real interesting. But we can rest in him. God don't want us to just dwell in the body and just stay in that place with him. He wants you to rest. Yeah. Do you know how powerful that is? Yeah. It is different. Do you know how powerful that is? Yeah. I don't want to just cover you and shield you from it. I want you to rest in me while it's going on. Say that. Yeah. Amen. Just rest. Rest in me, in my shadow. I got all of this going on around you. Just rest with me. Yeah. 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 Amen. The most exciting part for me is how the Amplified Version brags on God. God's power is so like that, that no enemy can withstand it. To me, in the last part of the verse, I hear God saying, you go ahead and rest in my shadow while I take care of all of your enemies. All right, yes. oh, I said it again. Oh, I hear God saying, you go ahead and rest in my shadow while I take care of all of your enemies. Yes. Because it's a power that no enemy can withstand. So, again, there is no demon in hell, not even Satan himself, that's a match for God. Do we not know this about him? We do, but I don't think we relegate it to our personal lives. Because, see, if we did, we wouldn't be worrying and stressing and in anxiety and fear so much. There's nothing that the enemy can, can do to us that God himself, his power, can't handle. We're worrying and stressing about the, the late notices, the doctor diagnosis. What's going on in our, our family, our marriage, our kids? We're worrying about all the things. What the news is reporting, what's about to happen, what ain't about to happen, what that prophet said, what this yes. minister did. We're worried about all that stuff. And God is like, I'm right here to handle all of it. All I need you to do is rest. You know how much faith that requires? I started carrying around this little um, necklace that has a mustard seed in it. Because that's the level of faith that we have to have. It's just a tiny, minute part. Just a mustard seed. You don't need much for God to do exceedingly abundantly above. Amen. You just need a little bit of faith. Just a little bit of, because it'll grow. Trust me, I promise you it will. But just trust God. Just a little bit. And all of it. And watch what he does. We're so busy. And this is why we're so tired in our spirits and our mind. Because we're too busy wrestling and fighting. Enemies that are not even ours to fight. Amen. 
God wants to handle all of your enemies Amen. so he can get the bragging rights. And I'm not giving them to him at all. God did that. God worked that out just last night. Leaving a Walmart, my son on the phone, not paying attention, walking ahead of me, decides I'm going to keep walking van, almost back into him. So much so, my mind could not fathom what was about to occur so that I could audibly say, stop. I just screamed. And in my scream, he stopped. And it stopped the van. Because the enemy said, oh, I'm going to take him out. She got to go forth tomorrow. No, we're going to interrupt that. God said, not so. Stop them. Stop the van and my son. Thank you, Lord. I never feared them. Junior never feared. Because why? We in the safety of the shot. So we rested in him. So regardless of what happens to come, what's going on currently in your life, God wants us to rest. And we rest when we know who's got us. And we find out who he is in the secret place. Because you're going to grow a hunger and a thirst for him. So you're going to start picking up that Bible. You're going to dust it off, the paper one. You're going to dust it off and you're going to get in it. Or you're going to turn the notifications off on your phone so that you're not interrupted all the time. You can get in the word and hear what God has to say. And you're going to want to pray. And not just, okay, I just woke up, I just ate, I'm about to go to bed. No, you're going to want to pray all throughout the day. Because it's possible to be praying all throughout the day. Your coworker going off and yelling, screaming, cussing, fussing. And yep, I hear you, but inside I'm praying. God help me not to pray. God help me not to do this person. God help me not to be praying. Because God wants to meet us right there. Why do we keep him separate? Why? Why did we do that? I'm asking. Not that you have to answer, but for ourselves. Because I had to answer that question for me. God, why do I keep you separate from everything that's going on? He wants to handle all of it. Because if you're, if I'm your enemy, you're God's enemy. When you come for me, you're coming for God. And trust me, God don't need no help defending himself. Had to learn that the hard way. God don't need no help defending himself. He's God. The one that we come in and worship and praise and give thanks for, he is God all by himself. Does he need any help? Does he need any help? No. So why are you trying to help God out? Why? Why do we do it? Because it's what we used to. It's what's comfortable. It's familiar. Well, I've come to make you very uncomfortable today, and I hope by the spirit of God I have. Because that's my assignment. To make you uncomfortable and shift your trajectory of thinking and give you hopefully a paradigm shift to know and understand that God wants to meet you in this secret place, not just in your prayer closet or in your war room, but inside of you. And I'm getting ahead of myself. As I'm closing, Psalms 91 and 01 admonishes us to dwell in the secret place with God or dwell in his presence. The more we grow and mature in God and go from faith to faith and glory to glory, it becomes less a place to escape to and more of a posture to live in and operate from. Let me say it again. The more we grow and mature in God and go from faith to faith and glory to glory, it becomes the secret place, a less of a place to escape to, and more of a posture to live in and operate from. We still await to our prayer closets, our war rooms, our isolated areas, and even our Sunday services to be in God's presence. That's needed and it's necessary for rest, reflection, impartation, and revelation. But what if God's presence took up space inside of us permanently? God wants to grow us from being in a place in his presence to him being able to take up residence or space inside of us regularly. So again, we're going to grow up real quick because remember we started out as kids in our little fort, in our tent, in our tree house. But we're going to grow up real quick. And we're still talking about the secret place. But no longer is it going to be a place outside of ourselves. Because we might not always be able to get to that fort. Or that tree house. Or that friend's house. So it, it's gone. Pretend the chairs are not here. It's now inside of me. Hallelujah. Amen. Where God has taken up space. So it's still a secret. Because it's between him and I. And only he and I know what I need in the moment. Only he knows what's going to help me through the current situation that I'm trying to navigate. Only he knows how best to handle me in the situation that I'm facing. Yeah. 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 Because he's inside of me. And I recognize his presence and his power. But I'm still in the secret place. That it's inside of me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. 
We often leave the secret place to work, raise kids, do married life, and even do ministry. But what if God's presence were so evident and strong in us that not only is it in us because we acknowledge it, but it shows up wherever we are? It's possible. Come here, Moses. Moses stayed there with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights. Moses did not eat any food or drink any water. And he wrote the words of the agreement, the Ten Commandments, on the two stone tablets. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai, he carried the two stone tablets of the agreement. Because he had talked with the Lord, his face was shining, but he did not know it. Aaron and all the people of Israel saw that Moses' face was shining bright, so they were afraid to go near him. But Moses called to them. So Aaron and all the leaders of the people went to him. When Moses finished speaking to the people, he put a covering over his face. Anytime Moses went before the Lord to speak with him, Moses took off the covering. Then Moses would come out and tell the Israelites what the Lord commanded. The people would see that Moses' face was shining bright, so he would cover his face again. He kept his face covered until the next time he went in to speak with the Lord so riddle me this face-to-face -face worship center as I take my seat. Wouldn't it be magnificent for when people saw us, they didn't see us, but they saw the glory of the Lord that we serve. That every time we walked in a room, the atmosphere shifted because we walked in with the presence of God. That every time we showed up on the scene, that they saw a glorious glow because it was evident that we've been in the face of God. This is the relationship that God wants with us. He wants to meet with us the way he met with Moses. And we don't have to go up on a mountain to do it. He wants to meet us right here where we are. We don't have to go over here. We don't have to go over there. He wants to meet us right here in our hearts so that he can change and transform us and make us more like him. He wants to make us fresh. He wants to make us new. He wants to make us models of the image of him in the earth. We have to stay in the secret place though in order for him to do that. We have to stop running. We have to stop fearing. We have to stop going here, there, and everywhere else and just stay in the secret place in his face so he can change us to look more like him. And less like us. When we spend time in his glory, we start to glow like the glory. Our features and our characteristics become more radiant like our Heavenly Father. We become transformed, healed, delivered, and set free. This is what happens, you all, when we get in the secret place with God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Some of us have gotten into situations that we've gotten into because we didn't go to the secret place. We went to the familiar place. We went to the place that we have been multiple times and thought we got solutions, not realizing that all we were doing was adding problem onto problem onto problem. And so I want to invite you, as Minister Shea has, has so aptly taught this lesson, I want to invite you to the secret place. But what's interesting, the secret place is in you. It's in you, you talking to the Father and the Father talking to you. So ask your neighbor, do you know where the secret place is? I only see a couple people asking their neighbor. I need everybody to participate in this lesson. Ask your neighbor, do you know where the secret place is? Wait for an answer and then ask them this invasive question. When's the last time you've been there? When's the last time you've been there? He says, I stand at the door knocking. God is a God of relationship. Every hand, I want you to raise your hands like this to receive from the Father. Father, we heard our lesson this, to this day. And we come to get in the secret place. To get in your presence. But we don't just want to visit your presence. Help us to dwell. Help us to dwell. We have so many distractions. So many things that pull us away from your presence. But today we surrender and ask you to teach us how to make your presence our posture. Teach us how to make your presence our practice. For you said if we seek you, you would be found of us. So we even repent for finding other secret places, for finding our money to be our secret place, for finding our honey to be our secret place, for finding whatever addiction we have to be our secret place. And today we ask you, help us to make you the secret place where we can dwell and you will abide. In Jesus' name we pray. Now if you prayed that prayer with me, can you repeat amen? In Jesus' word. And now you have an opportunity to make a decision about what you just heard. Those of you who are watching who have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, today is your day. God desires to make you a vessel for his glory. I know I need his help. And why he is Lord of my life. If you know you need his help. And you want him to be Lord of your life. Will you pray this prayer with me? I repent father of all my sins. Known and unknown. I'm sorry father for, for the wrong I've done against you. And I confess I need you. And want you to be Lord of my life. Forgive me and come into my life and make me new and be my savior and fill me with your Holy Spirit in Jesus name now if you prayed that prayer with me I want you to text SAVE to 202-519-9518 and we'll follow up with you my sister my brother welcome to the family of God we want to share some more information with you so text us these are some of the things we have going on at Face to Face Worship Center. Every Tuesday evening at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, join us for our Zoom Bible study. You don't want to miss this interactive time of intuitive study of God's Word. Jo 
Join us every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for in-person worship at 9121 Piscataway Road, Suite 4B, Clinton, Maryland, 20735, or virtual worship on all our social media platforms, Facebook Live, and our YouTube channel. We would love to see you in person or virtually. Our Our corporate intercessory prayer is every Wednesday and Friday at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us by dialing into our conference line at 319-527-4008. Come pray with us as we pray for the nation, the world, and you. There are several ways you can give here at Face to Face Worship Center. Givelify, look for Face to Face Worship Center. Cash App, F2FWC. Our website at www.f2fwc.org and click the donate link. Or you can text the word F2FWC give and the dollar amount to 1-888-364-4483 and give your offering there. All this information should be scrolling across your screen. If you prayed the prayer of salvation with us today, text SAVE to 202-519-9518 and we will contact you to provide more information about how to walk out your new relationship with Jesus Christ. Welcome to the family of God. If you are looking for a church home, join us. We are the place of intimate worship where you can grow both spiritually and socially. For more information, text PARTNER to 202-519-9518 and we will send you more information about our ministry. Continued blessings and we look forward to you worshiping with us again next Sunday.